Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the third video in IB Chemistry Topic 10, Organic Chemistry, where we will be looking at alkanes, free radical substitution, halogenoalkanes, alkenes, and addition polymerization. Before watching this video, we highly recommend watching the first two videos in this series, covering the core functional groups, homologous series, and naming. We introduced alkanes as the simplest, since their functional group is that they have no functional group, i.e. consist of only carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen single bonds. They are defined by the general formula CnH2n plus 2. As they are nonpolar, their intermolecular forces only exist as weak London forces, and so they are volatile and insoluble in water. The high-strength carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds they contain make them relatively unreactive. However, the two reactions they undergo, which you must learn, are combustion and substitution. They undergo complete combustion with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. For example, the equation for ethane is this. It is worth noting that if oxygen is limited and incomplete combustion occurs, they form carbon, carbon monoxide and water. For example, this. This reaction produces a smoky flame. They also undergo substitution with halogens in the presence of UV light to form a halogenoalkane and hydrogen halide. For example, the equation for ethane reacting with chlorine is C2H6 plus Cl2 goes to C2H5Cl plus HCl. The mechanism by which this occurs is called free radical substitution, and you are expected to know it in detail, so let's cover it. It consists of three stages. Initiation, propagation and termination. Let's consider the mechanism for ethane reacting with chlorine. Initiation involves using energy from UV light to split the bond within the diatomic halogen, here chlorine, so that one electron passes to each atom. Doing so creates two highly reactive atoms known as free radicals, each with a single unpaired electron. We represent this stage using two curly half-headed arrows from the interhalogen bond to either atom, indicating the movement of one electron. A dot is then used to denote the free radicals produced. A term worth remembering, which appears in your exam, is homolytic fission. It describes bond breaking where one electron passes to each atom, as seen here. Propagation is a chain reaction in which the free radicals collide with the alkane, creating further free radicals. These then collide with further halogens to propagate the reaction. However, the stage involves no overall change in the number of free radicals, as when one is used up, one is created. The first propagation reaction always involves the alkane colliding with a halogen radical to form a hydrogen halide and alkane radical. The second reaction always involves this alkane radical colliding with a diatomic halogen to form a halogenoalkane and a halogen radical. Whilst propagation can finish here, it is worth noting the halogenoalkane can then restart this process with this new halogen radical, allowing for a halogenoalkane containing more than one halogen to be created, i.e. a polysubstitution. Termination is a series of reactions in which the free radicals collide with one another, thus involving a decrease in the number of free radicals. The possible reactions within termination are simply the combinations of radicals produced during propagation. So, in our example, we would have the following three reactions. However, if polysubstitution occurred, we would have an additional three reactions. Let's put this all together in an example question. Write, in full, the free radical substitution mechanism for the formation of 1,1-dibromoethane. We would first write initiation, showing the homolytic fission of the interbromine bond to form two bromine radicals, remembering to write UV above our arrow. We would then write propagation, showing first the reaction of methane with one of these radicals to form hydrogen bromide plus a CH3 radical, then this reacting with diatomic bromine to form one bromoethane plus a bromine radical. Since the question asks for 1,2-dibromoethane, we must repeat these equations using this product. So, first show the reaction with a bromine radical to form another hydrogen bromide and CH2Br radical, then this reacting with a diatomic bromine to form 1,2-dibromoethane plus a bromine radical. 
we would then write termination showing all the possible combinations of radicals. So, Br plus Br, Br plus CH3, Br plus CH2Br, CH3 plus CH3, CH3 plus CH2Br, and CH2Br plus CH2Br. So, the product of the free radical substitution mechanism for an alkane is a halogenoalkane. It therefore follows that you're expected to know a little detail about them too. At standard level, you must only learn about the classification of halogenoalkanes as primary, secondary, or tertiary. Primary halogenoalkanes are those in which the carbon atom to which the halogen is bound is attached to one other carbon atom, for example, one chlorobutane. Secondary halogenoalkanes are those in which the carbon atom to which the halogen is bound is attached to two other carbon atoms, for example, 2-chlorobutane. Tertiary halogenoalkanes are those in which the carbon atom to which the halogen is bound is attached to three other carbon atoms, for example, 2-chloro-2-methylpropane. As a reminder, these are all isomers of each other, as they all share the same molecular formula. We will re-encounter this classification system when covering alcohols, so it is important to understand. Those of you studying IB chemistry higher level will also learn to appreciate the influence this classification has on the reactions of halogenoalkanes as covered in our Topic 20 video series. So, we've expanded on alkanes, but what about alkenes? You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.